You were so lazy. I worked until the day before I gave birth. Young people those days are so spoiled. My mother-in-law, who is my husband's mother, forcefully grabbed my arm a few weeks before my due date and threw me out under the snow-filled sky. This arrogant mother-in-law, who acts as if she knows all the rules, has been a force of trouble for me since the beginning of my marriage. I never imagined that it would escalate into a major incident that involved neighboring residents and was covered in the news. My name is Judy and I am 32 years old. I married Scott, a classmate from university, and two years have passed since then. My husband was allowed to attend university by his parents on a condition that he would return to his hometown someday. After graduating, Scott returned to his hometown and began training at his family's long-standing restaurant. I was working as a company employee. We decided to get married because we were in a long-distance relationship. I moved to my husband's hometown, but my heart, which was full of expectations for a new place, was shattered early on. I am strict. I'm gonna make sure you're properly trained, so be prepared. I was greeted by my mother-in-law with such enthusiasm that I thought the devil himself had come. My husband and father-in-law are both relatively quiet people, but my mother-in-law has a strong and clear voice and it's also quite loud. As someone who suffers from migraines, her loud voice made me suffer and echo painfully in my head. My mother-in-law apparently wanted to welcome a daughter-in-law from the same industry background as their family. If you don't approve of me marrying Judy, I won't inherit the family business. Despite her initial disapproval, my husband's strong will eventually convinced her to reluctantly accept our marriage. My father-in-law, on the other hand, was always kind to me from the beginning because I was the person his son had chosen. Their family restaurant was located nearby the in-law's house. The house was originally built by my late grandparents-in-law, and although it was old, it was renovated a few years ago. My husband and I lived in a separate building on the property. He wakes up early to go to the restaurant for morning preparations, and after seeing him off, I hurried back to the main house, where my mother-in-law was waiting for me. Come on, come on, you're not going to make it in time for breakfast if you were that sloppy. From early morning, my mother-in-law slams her hands together and yells at me as if a strict director has come. If I dare to answer back, she would probably treat me even more strictly. I find it too troublesome, so I just let her words pass by. Your mother really spoiled you, didn't she? People start gathering few hours before we open the restaurant. Oh, it looks delicious as always. Thank you for making a great breakfast this early morning. While my husband and the staff cheered me on, there were also things that made me angry. This is nothing. Today, too. I made most of it since Judy is so laid back. My mother-in-law's statement that seemed to imply that she had made everything made me feel uneasy. When I was alone with my husband at night, I couldn't help but complain to him. Your mom is pretty strict. I got scolded really bad again today. I'm really sorry, hon. My mom is actually a shy and quiet person. But she gets overly enthusiastic when it comes to the restaurant ever since you came, Judy. Since I only knew my mother-in-law in her current state, I couldn't believe what my husband was saying. He told me to tell him if anything happened, and having an ally was reassuring. Divorcing my husband due to mother-in-law's bullying never crossed my mind. Plus, it wasn't all bad. Thanks to my mother-in-law's guidance, 
I've become much better at cooking since I got married, and my work efficiently has improved a lot. The elderly couple next door always had a beautiful smile, and the owner of the butcher shop was very friendly. The florist's wife loved to chat, and even my mother-in-law couldn't escape from her for an hour. It was a kind and gentle community. Your mom's way of speaking is pretty harsh, though. Wow! Look at all the snow. This is the first time I've ever seen a snow-covered world since I was born. I was very excited by the silver world that spread out before me, as snow really fell in my hometown in San Francisco. Scott, let's make a snowman. My husband watched me frolicking like a child with a smile on his face. It's embarrassing to be acting like this over a little snow at your age. Don't you think it's embarrassing if the neighbors hear you being so loud and having fun? It's really shameful. My mother-in-law seemed to have been watching us from our house, and after giving me a snarky comment, she went back home. Standing next to me with a disgusted look. I unconsciously muttered to my husband, "Hey, Scott, don't expect me to take care of her in the future." After two years of marriage, a change occurred between us when I finally got pregnant with our long-awaited baby. It was a happy and exciting moment for us. After undergoing numerous hospital visits and treatments to achieve the pregnancy. Surprisingly, my mother-in-law did not make any comments or criticism about the baby, which was a relief for us. When I announced the pregnancy, she simply said with a smile that I had never seen before, "Oh, really? That's great news. But make sure not to catch a cold, Judy." However, as usual, she quickly returned to her stern expression and added. You will still do the household chores. I was confused by my mother-in-law's constantly changing expressions. Although I did not have severe morning sickness, I struggled with anemia, making breakfast preparation challenging. One day, she noticed my struggle and made breakfast for me, grumbling under her breath. Thank you. It's not a big deal. I just got irritated because you were being slow. She replied dismissively. Despite her behavior, I sensed her kindness when she regularly checked on me and left food for me to eat. The rest of my pregnancy went smoothly, and by the time I entered the second trimester, I was excused from making breakfast and helping at the restaurant because of the strain it was putting on my body. I started spending more time at home, and my stress level decreased a lot. My mother-in-law came regularly to check on me and left me food. I just came to check if you were not slacking off. Here, I made too much food, so eat some. <laughs> I think you are a kind person, aren't you? I said this, thinking of ways to get closer to my mother-in-law despite her strange behavior. Suddenly, my mother-in-law stopped moving and muttered something so quietly I couldn't hear it. Then she suddenly stood up and said to me, "Judy, let's go shopping together." Now, she forcibly dragged me outside, saying that a little exercise was necessary. I told her I wanted to rest at home, but you are lazy. I worked until the day before I gave birth. Young people those days are so spoiled. She forcefully took the key from me and locked the door, saying she would bring the car. I was left standing at the entrance, but my mother-in-law did something unthinkable. She got into the car and opened the window, saying to me, "Shovel some snow or do something, and work a little. You can't come in until it's done." Then she drove off. I was stunned for a few seconds, and then quickly snapped out of it, thinking, "No way, that's impossible." I put my hand in my pocket to get the house key, but it wasn't there. I felt my blood run cold. 
Even if I wanted to contact someone, my phone was inside the house. I had no choice but to walk to the restaurant. But then, I felt a strange sensation in my body. How much time had passed since then? My mother-in-law had come back from shopping, and must have been surprised to see an ambulance parked on the property. There were doctors, nurses, and few neighbors around me. My husband and father-in-law had rushed over, looking worriedly at me. My mother-in-law was being scolded by my husband and father-in-law about my head. Are you crazy to throw Judy out in her last month? I, I'm, I'm sorry. But honestly, that was the least of my concerns. Quiet. Save the lecture for later. The doctor spoke after me. Please be quiet. Your wife is about to give birth. Yes. When I started walking to the restaurant, my water broke. In a panic state, I screamed. And the elderly couple next door came to my aid. There was a big event nearby that day, and the ambulance was stuck in traffic. It was a miracle that our neighbor's friend, who used to be a midwife, was called over. By the time at the ambulance arrived, my cervix was already quite dilated. By then, my husband and father-in-law had rushed over to me, and I was to give birth at home. A few minutes later, with a healthy cry, our long-awaited child was born. The baby and I were immediately taken by ambulance. As fate would have it, someone from a TV station who was filming an event happened to pass by my in-law's house. Our story was broadcasted as a life brought into this world by the local residents. A few days later, someone came to visit me in the hospital. Judy, um, my mother-in-law stood there with a face that looked like she was about to cry. I stared at her intently. Have you seen the baby? She's a cute little girl who looks a lot like Scott, isn't she? Did you peek into the newborn room? My husband's word made my mother-in-law not. But I was really scared, thinking that the baby might not have made it. Do you understand what we went through? You did something very serious. My mother-in-law hung her head. I know, I did something terrible. Right after that, I asked my husband for a divorce. But he said I had to talk to you first. There are a lot of things I want to say to you. My mother-in-law continued to keep her head down while I talked to her in a matter of fact tone. The day after giving birth, my father-in-law and husband came to apologize to me. I told them that I wanted to talk to my mother-in-law and told them, Aren't you two relying on her too much? Please take care of her and show appreciation for her more. I ended up giving them a little bit of a lecture. My father-in-law said that he had no intention of leaving my mother-in-law. Although he hadn't told her yet, he said that he planned to hand the restaurant over to my husband and leave the house with my mother-in-law because of this incident. He told me that the final decision was upon me. My mother-in-law's eyes were red and swollen by crying so much. Even so, when someone is spoken too harshly or in a sarcastic way, it still hurts, you know? I've never met Scott's grandmother, but you don't have to force yourself to be like her, do you? My mother-in-law raised her head and looked at me with surprise. Actually, I had realized a while ago that my mother-in-law was a kind person. The people in this town are very talkative. The landlady was very lively and smiling like you when she first came here as a bride. But the previous landlady, her mother-in-law, was a very tough person. It was a flower shop owner's wife who told me that. Originally, it was the grandparents of my deceased grandmother who started the long-established restaurant. My mother-in-law, 
who was born into an ordinary family, was to have been rigorously trained. My deceased grandmother's favorite phrase was, "Are you planning to ruin this restaurant?" Apparently, my mother-in-law herself had difficulty conceiving children, and Scott was the only child she finally had. She was very worried when he brought home a woman from an ordinary family like me who wanted to marry him. That is why, on that day, when you said I was kind. Suddenly, I heard my mother's voice in my head and saying, "Be stricter." I'm such a fool. I am so sorry, Judy. I thought for a moment and said to my mother-in-law, "I don't really understand what it means to be a proper aunt lady, but if I were a customer, I would feel better to see a smiling face." I have a request for you, Mom. I want to make breakfast together with you in harmony every morning, and it's fine if you lower your voice a little. I also don't like you clapping your hands. And then there's one more thing. Hey, there's more. We laughed out loud together. Years later, I was still working as a young proprietress of the long-established restaurant. My daughter Katie, who was born at that time, is now two years old. Every morning, I make breakfast with my mother-in-law. The table, which used to be very quiet, is now very noisy, and the staff seem very happy. The reason why my mother-in-law was late that day was because she got caught up in a conversation with the flower shop owner's wife, and got stuck in traffic on the way back. There was a rumor that my mother-in-law had thrown me out, but that was not true. I had just forgotten that I gave her the house key earlier that day. The story quickly spread from the flower shop owner's wife, and the rumors about my mother-in-law soon disappeared. My father-in-law started spending more time with my mother-in-law, and left the restaurant to my husband. So they started going out together more often. The restaurant has also been thriving with an increase in new customers. As usual, the area becomes a winter wonderland when winter comes. Looks like it snowed again this year. Mom, are we going to have another snowball fight this year? Said my daughter Katie, eager and grinning at me. I'll get you. When my husband went outside, he started making snowmen as usual every year. My mother-in-law also came out of the house and said, "Grandma is on the same team as Katie." My mother-in-law smiled happily at my daughter's words, and I returned her smile. Then I reminded my mother-in-law, "Hey, don't forget our promise." I know, dear, but more importantly, you shouldn't get too cold. Hey, Scott, don't just stand there. Bring a coat for Judy. On that day, I had asked my mother-in-law at the hospital, "Let's make snowmen together when Katie gets bigger. I want you to be a kind and lovely grandmother with a beautiful smile." Promise. When I conveyed this to my mother-in-law, she burst into tears. Currently, I am pregnant with my second child. And will soon give birth to a younger brother for my daughter. My daughter Katie is super happy and pets my belly every day, eagerly awaiting his arrival. When Katie was born, my mother-in-law provided me full support. I'm looking forward to a new baby, she said enthusiastically. She's like a second mother to me, and her unwavering support has been invaluable. Despite the challenges, I plan to continue living happily among the people in this beautiful land.